4.2 is about uh, linear approximations and differentials. Uh, it is something I think you guys will uh, like. It's not something crazy. It's actually <laughs> much easier than 4.1. Um, but 4.1 is usually, sometimes some books even include it in chapter three. They don't necessarily even separate it, but um, I was glad this book kind of separates it and puts it in applications. Um, so uh, let's talk about what a linear approximation is, how we can uh, use it to help us guesstimate and estimate things. Uh, and that's some of the reasons that it is important. So first there's a formula you need to write down. If we want to find the linear approximation of a function at a point for f of x when x is close to a, the linear approximation is given by f of a plus f prim prime of a, <coughs> excuse me, times the quantity of x minus a. So remember, this is an instantaneous rate of change. That's that slope at that point, that instantaneous rate of change. So that just kind of adds on that extra little piece that we need to guesstimate what it is. So that formula will be important as we go through this pro uh, process. Okay, everybody have the formula written down. Okay, so let's look at our first example. Let's say that we want to approximate the square root of 9.1 using what we know about the square root of 9 because it's only that little extra piece. So right off the top of your head, you should know that the answer will be something very, very close to 3, right? You know, the square root of 9.1 is going to be super close to 3. But this formula is going to allow us to guesstimate or estimate what it's going to be. So let's write down our formula. Now, we are going to use an uh, a value of 9 because that's going to help us. Okay. So we know that f of 9 is 3 because our formula is the square root of x. Um, let's find f prime at 9. Well, let's think about f of x. If we were doing the square root as a derivative, we would want to rewrite that in power notation. So f of x is x to the 1 half. So the derivative of that is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. Remember, the 1 half drops down in front. The power goes down by 1. Okay. So if we stick a 9 into our derivative, um, if we stick 9 in, we get 1 half times 9 to the negative 1 half. Well, the 1 half power on a 9 is just 3. The negative uh, power flips it. So that would be 1 half times 1 third or 1 sixth. So now let's take our linearization formula. My, I'm sorry, my A's and 9's are not, they don't look too much different, but <laughs> hopefully you get that. And let's put in a 9 for our A. Now, this formula is going to work for something close to 9. So if we're uh, approximating 9, we use, or if we're approximating 9.1, something we know, it has to be something close to it. Um, we are going to get uh, 3 plus 1 sixth of x minus 9, which is 3 plus 1 sixth x minus uh, 9 over 6. Uh, 9 over 6 is the same as 3 halves. So our linearization formula, so we can approximate the square root of 9.1. Uh, 3 halves uh, from 3, which is 6 halves, is 3 halves. So now, now we have a formula. So if we want to approximate the square root of 9.1, this formula 
gives that approximation to us. We just got to plug in 9.1. So it's going to be 1 sixth of 9.1 plus 3 rounds. Now, if we throw that into a calculator, that is approximately uh, 3.0167. Now, here's the interesting part. If we were to plug in 9.1 into a square root, guess what we get? 3.0166. That's how close this formula works. Okay. So it is very, very helpful for us to approximate values close to things we know by using uh, this linearization technique. So it's just a technique for us to approximate stuff that we know uh, or stuff that we don't know if we know that it's close to something we do know, if that makes sense. Same idea can be done with this one. If we wanted to approximate the uh, sine of 62, well, I don't know what the sine of 62 is, but I do know what the sine of 60 is for pi over 3. So we can use that same technique. So let's find out what we know. So we need to come up with a formula for this. Now remember, we're going to do f of 60. I'm going to use degree mode. Uh, plus f prime of 60 times x minus 60. And I think this one, we might have to plug it, put in radians, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. Okay. So um, let's think about what we know. Well, our function is the sine. The derivative is the cosine. Still got to know all your derivatives. So what is the derivative at pi over 3? Or 60 degrees. If you remember your unit circle at all, the point at 60 degrees, or pi over 3, is uh, 1 half squared of 3 over 2. The cosine is your x value. The x value would be 1 half. So let's, let's leave this one a pi over 3. Okay. Anyway, um, the uh, sine of 60 that's what this one would be, is square root of 3 over 2. The cosine of 60, which was our first derivative, is 1 half. Well, I think I really want 60. Yeah, let's keep it 60. I think it will work. We'll find out in a minute. Uh, um, anyway, um, so that's going to be square root of 3 over 2 plus 1 half. Let's put in 62. I don't know why I wrote this. I was going to, I was going to distribute. I didn't do that. 62 minus 60 is 2. Half of 2 is 1. So we get square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2 is approximately... Yeah, 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 there we go. I'm sorry. No, no, we're, we're adding. Half of 2 is 1. So the square root of 3, square root. So that would be 1 degree. I, I don't know. I'm just trying to think about 
for if we have to use radians. Yeah, I'm thinking we do. What is, okay, so we'll just do convert them right now. Uh, every degree is a, is related back to 180. So we tack on a pi and put it over 180. So I think that's what we need to do. Okay. So square root of 3 over 2 plus pi over 180 is the decimal approximate 0 0.8835. We'll just assume that's correct. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, if we if we put the sine of 62, we get 0.8829. So, yeah, that's pretty darn close. Okay. And it's supposed to be an estimate. So I guess we need to use radians for the linearization to work if we're doing uh, anything related to angle measures. Make sure it's radians. So I guess we could have called 62, 62 pi over 180 right off the bat. Sorry about that. Okay. Let's take a look at this one. So it says find the linearization uh, at zero. So then it would just be one to some power. Uh, to use that approximation to estimate 1.01. So we know what f of 1 to the n power is. It's one. So that's why we can use that to estimate what happens when we plug on just a, a little bit. So the function we're using, let's make it a third. They said, uh, see how it's a third there? Okay. Okay. So let's write our linearization formula down. And remember, A is going to be 0. So we are going to do F of 0, F prime at 0, and then X minus 0 is just going to get us. Okay, so uh, we know what the function is. Uh, F of 0 is just going to be 1 cubed or 1. So that is equal to 1. But we don't know what f prime of 0 is. So let's find the derivative. Now, the, if our function is 1 plus x cubed, think about our derivative. You have to um, use the chain rule. So we would drop the 3, leave it alone. Power goes down by 1 times the derivative of the inside. Now, it just so happens the derivative of our inside is 1. So that's nice. I mean, it makes it a little easier in the whole process. Now, we need to know what the derivative is doing at 0. So let's plug in 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. Square that still get 1 times 3 times 1 is 3. So our uh, linearization equation is 3x plus 1. Look at our formula. Our function was 1 plus x to the third. Where does 1 plus x equal 1.01? When x is 0 0.01. So we have to plug in the 0 0.01. We've made our formula so that we have to get the thing inside. So our x value is not 1.01, it's just that little extra piece, that 0 0.01. So I'm just making stuff up, so we're, we're doing our best. So the answer is 1.003. Yeah, I might cut that out. We'll, we'll make them believe I have confidence in what I'm doing, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll cut out all the pieces. <laughs> Exactly. 1.01 to the third power is 1.030301. So I, I knew that it was, three was not the where it should start. So I'm thinking something's wrong. That's why. Okay.
you got to think about what would give us the original, and that's your extra plugin. Sorry about that. Okay, we're 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 working on it. We're figuring it out. What did I do? Yeah, it, I mean, it is a linearization. It's called a linearization. You do get a Y equals MX plus B. So you do get a much simpler form to plug into. And that's the power of it is that we are able to use a much simpler equation in order. Otherwise, we would have to do 1.01 times 1.01 times 1.01. This just allows us to do uh, something quicker to estimate that number. Yeah, that's, I know that, but okay. <laughs> now let's talk about differentials. Uh, differentials help us to find small changes in a function. Um, it's going to have to use that Leibniz notation, that dy dx. dy, we will consider the change in y. dx, we'll consider the change in x. We know that notation, but for the first time, we are going to separate the dy and dx. So you'll notice that the dx is going to multiply to the other side. And that's so we can say, hey, if our x changes by this much, what can we predict our y change? And so it is related. And if we think about related rates in a way, it, 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 it hopefully would make sense. So let's look at an example. It says for each of the following functions, find dy and evaluate when x equals three and dx is 0.1. So that if the change in x is 0.1, find the change in y is what essentially they're saying. You're gonna like these problems. They're very, very nice. Especially when they're explicitly solved for y like this one is. So, we're just going to take the derivative and instead of using the y prime notation, please use the dy dx notation. So we are dis, uh, uh, differentiating with respect to x. So remember the x's don't need anything special. So this would be dy dx equals 2x plus 2. So it's just a derivative like we know it. The only difference is, is we're going to separate the dy dx notation and just that dx multiply it on the other side. So dy is 2x plus 2 dx. And I wouldn't even try to distribute or nothing. Just write it the other side in parentheses with a dx tacked on. And now let's plug in the numbers. We know they have told us that x is 3 and that dx is 0.1. So let's plug those values in. So dy is going to be 3 times 2, 6 plus 2 is 8 times 0.1 or 0 0.8. That's it. There's nothing more fancy about it. That's what it is. Okay. So we separate the dy dx. We've never done that before. And that is just for us to detect if we change x by this much, how much will the y change? That's all that means. Now let's do it again for b. Now again, these are nice when our x and y's are uh, solved explicitly. So if we have y equals, that's great. These are nice problems. Okay, so uh, first off, let's go ahead and uh, take the derivative. So we know dy dx is the negative sine of x. So all your rules for your derivatives, make sure that you are looking at those flashcards occasionally. Um, so uh, now let's distribute the dx to the other side. So dy is the negative sine of x dx. Now, because 
uh, x was given to be 3 and dx point 1. And we're going to assume that's th 3 radians. Um, we are definitely going to have to use a calculator. So dy would be negative sine of 3 times 0 0.1. Now it's important if you do that um, uh, on a calculator um, that you have it in radian mode, but I don't even care. Um, you can just leave your answer just like that for me. That is the correct exact answer. Uh, that is dy. So I'm okay. If they gave you something that was on the unit circle, do something with it. If it's just a number, just leave it. So that differentials are easier than the linearization, I think. They're just kind of, it's kind of a pretty straightforward process. Any questions about that one? So let's take a look at four point, uh, example 4.9. Now, delta y, um, if you think about how it relates, it's a change in, do you remember, okay, I'm going to give you a, a formula here. Um, delta y is a change in y. It is not dy, okay? Delta y is the original x value. Those two, uh, x, the original two x values you plug in. Delta y will kind of help us get the same thing, okay? So delta y is going to be f of 3. Well, let's go with the fact we're changing by 0 0.1. So let's, let's put the 3.1 first and the 3 to start. So we ended at a height or an x value of 3.1. So it's always uh, f of y2 minus, or f of x2 minus f of x1. Let's change these two too. Again, I apologize, but this is this is new to me as well. Anyway, um, so if we use our formula and we plug in 3.1, so if you plug in 3.1, 3.1 squared plus 2 times 3.1, that's 15.81. If you plug in 3, you get 9 plus 6 or 15. So delta y is just your change in y from the start at 3 at the end at 3.1 is 0 0.81. Okay. Now let's see how that's different than delta or than dy. Now they're usually very, they're going to be very, very close things. Yeah, that means delta. Okay. So we know if y equals x squared plus 2x, dy dx is 2x plus 2. So dy is 2x plus 2 times dx. Now remember, x is 3 and dx is 0.1. Let's plug those in. So 3 times 2 is 6. 6 plus 2 is 8. 0.1 is 0.1. If you multiply them, you get 0.8. Look how close they were. Delta Y is the real change in Y over that starting at 3, 1 and moving a change in X of 0.1. But delta Y, that differential, doesn't give us the exact amount, but it's always going to be very close. It is always going to be very close. It's kind of going to give us a, a, a change in that thing with a little bit of a margin of error. It's going to just be a little bit of a margin of error. 
Um, let's skip that. I don't care about that. Okay. And that gives us our homework. The solutions are given. Uh, I've given examples of problems just like those ones. That's why the other problems we can skip. Uh, we'll work on this uh, today and Monday. The homework will be due Monday night so that you'll have time to work on it in class. Your project was due um, today. Uh, you won't get much points turn, uh, taken off if you turn it in sometime today. If you turn it in tomorrow, you're getting more points taken off. So you remember you have to turn in the problems as well as the, the actual one page JPEG or PDF of your created poster. So there you go.